contest is in the middleweight division and is set for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Lorenzo Hahn. Here he is, Lorenzo Hunt, two and three, courtesy of Special Operations Wounded Warriors, the walk down by Sal. This guy here is, if there's ever fitting music for somebody, this is perfect for Lorenzo Hunt. Two and three, 34 years old. He stands six foot even, born in Cleveland, Ohio, now fighting out of Jacksonville, Florida. He's also nine and two as an amateur. Both of his professional victories have come by way of TKO. He told me, look, man, I'm just a family man. I got a full-time job. I paint cars. I love classic car restoration. And he dedicates all of his fights to somebody in his family. Tonight, he dedicates this fight to Kareem Hunt, a running back drafted by the KC Chiefs. Yes, I got a chance to catch up with him uh, yesterday. And he said, you know, kind of a testament to how big the sport of mixed martial arts has become. He said at first he just kind of did this to fight, but he is taking his career seriously now. He's starting to learn all the finer arts of mixed martial arts, such as jiu-jitsu and a wrestling. He's taking it very seriously. He believes he's a tighter, better fighter, and tonight he's going to go out there and show that. He's going to have to prove something seriously with Michael Lombardo because Michael Lombardo's undefeated. Although he's 2 0, he's got a lot to prove. But Lorenzo Hunt's got five fights to his record. Of course, 11 as an amateur. This is a guy that's got the experience. It may not show just yet on his professional record. But believe you me, ladies and gentlemen, this guy is more than happy to stand and bag. Back into the cage with Rodolfo Roman. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, Michael. Lombardo! Here he is, Michael Lombardo. 2-0. and When I first looked at this guy, I'm like, you must have played another sport. He told me flat out, yep, I was a college football player. 27 years old. He's fighting out of Jupiter, Florida, representing the American top team. He's got one TKO finish on his record. This guy says all the time, you know what, Joe? I know what you're going to ask me. I heard you asking everyone before me. I'm a family guy. You know what I love to do? I just love to go to the beach. You live down in Florida, you go to the beach. Just relax over there. I'm a simple guy who loves to fight. I said, you're a football, former football player, but you love to fight. He goes, just, I love the competition. I just want to compete. I want to do whatever I can uh, just to, to remain competitive. He's still young. He's 27 years old. Yeah, I mean, you know, once again, you know, mixed martial arts has taken off so much. It's kind of become an avenue for a lot of these different athletes who, who love that physical contact. You know, football player, it doesn't get any more physical than stepping inside the cage and fighting. And, you know, it's, it's growing and it's giving a lot of guys an opportunity now to just continue to compete and really go out there and, and finish their athletic careers. Yeah, by the way, uh, he was a linebacker at Wagner College. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Yeah, he's, a, he's definitely a specimen. When I saw him yesterday, you know, we are talking, you know, it's just, it's a great guy. He's just an absolutely great guy. But you got to flip that switch. And tonight he flips the switch. He steps into the cage. Obviously, Lorenzo Hunt wants nothing to do with him. He's staring him down, keeping his eye on him, will not let him do anything else. And now it's like just one of those things, guys. These guys are going to step into the middle. The referee is going to put these guys together. But first, we go back into the cage to make this official with Rodolfo Roman. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is in the Titan FC middleweight division and is set for three rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man walks in with a record of two and three. He is a mixed martial artist who weighed in at 184.2 pounds. Fighting out of St. Augustine, Florida, Lorenzo Hart. And across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man walks in with an undefeated record with two victories. He is a mixed martial artist who weighed in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Michael Lombardo. And when the action begins, your referee, George Alonzo. I give you both instructions over the back in the dressing room. Okay, let me remind you, protect yourself and obey my commands. Hook him up. 
There we have it. Here's the Titan FC. The tail of the tape brought to you by He's a 10. It's his turn. Hunt, Lombardo, a two-inch reach advantage for Lombardo. And, of course, the youth advantage definitely goes to Lombardo at 27 years old. Here's the fighter breakdown by Kumar Usman brought to you by Regrip. For Hunt, I think he needs to just keep the fight standing. You know, he believes he's, he's worked a lot on his boxing. He's got better boxing. So he needs to keep the fight standing in order to be able to exercise that. And for Lombardo, if he looked at anything, he would see that, of course, you know, the fights that, you know, Hunt has lost is because he was able to be taken down and submitted. So that's what he needs to do. He had to take down, and right away he wasted no Not time. Not even 20 seconds in, he gets a takedown, but runs back up and dragged right back down on the ground. Here comes some control here by Lombardo. Beautiful trip there, beautiful back trip. Right now he's kind of riding him, and this is what we call referees. That bulldog choke, but you know, that gives Hunt the opportunity to stand right back up. Now he needs to break. He needs to get out of this clinch position. And quit, quit messing around. Him. He needs to break to get back to where he's able to use his boxing. Dangerous once again. Giving up his back, or perhaps you could say it was Lombardo taking the back there, or at least beginning to control and ride the situation. Yeah, Lombardo said, you know, like, he wants that choke. Me, you know, I have better wrestling. You know, I'm, I'm a well, better, well-rounded fighter, and so I'm going to use that. And you can see it here. You know, he's kind of controlling Hunt. Right away, he's dragging him down to the ground, and he's just oh kind of ragdolling him around. Don't grab the glove! And he's repeatedly going for that Dars. But he's not in position. He needs to kind of get on that side, knock him over down to the side, and then squeeze it in. Oh, he loses position, and now he finds himself on his back. Gave up the underhook there. He had an overhook, but now he's just stable as a position. I mean, would you not have recommended to keep that underhook to begin looking for a sweep? Well, uh, you know, I would, but the one thing that, you know, that he, he's doing a good job of, he's, he's trying to set something up. He's continuing to move his hips. He's not just staying stable there. Hunt needs to get his hand off of the mat, which is the first thing they teach you is, you know, when you're on top of someone, especially someone who's got a good guard and is looking to set something up, you need to get your hand off of the mat. The first mistakes you make when you take jiu-jitsu class your first month or so, you learn that real quick. Damn, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful stand up there from Lombardi. He gets back up, drops right down to that single, runs the pipe, has Hunt right back down on the canvas. Now he's in a position here. Do you want to keep him here in half guard? Do you want to get your right leg out? Because he's got his, you know, he's got him against the cage, which you know, relatively speaking, it's okay to remain in this position because he can start throwing some left punches and elbows. Oh no, as a wrestler, oh my god, this is this is the dream position. We <laughs> love the half guard. And especially up against the cage like that, because you know, it feels like it's two people sandwiching you down against the, the ground. And you're just able to, you have a free hand, and you're just raining down strikes on your opponent. So this is the dream position. This is where you want to be right here. For Lombardo, right now, what I would do is right there, I would post with that left hand. I would pull that right hand out, look to land something huge over the top, and then dig it right back really quick into that underhook position. So you never really lose in position, but you're landing damaging strikes that can end the fight at any time. So now he's going to try and trap the right arm with his knee because the left arm of Hunt is, trying to, is holding him down, preventing him to get space to land some bombs. Yeah, you can try to do that, but the, you know it's kind of tough to do because your right leg is you know it's, it's trapped in between his legs and so when you do something like that there he goes and he extends just like that it's easy for him to buck his way out of there we got a minute left here in the opening round here lorenzo hunt taking on michael lombardo lombardo now in full control here has his opponent down on the mat partially against the cage Slowly working his ground and pound, trying to get his left arm free to throw some elbows and some punches. Yeah, and it's almost like he heard what his opponent's intentions were in this fight. You know, by not giving him a chance at all to use any of that boxing that he wanted to use. Reverse elbow throw there by Hunt. Good elbow. It would have been a, a, a devastating elbow if Lombardo had an arm choke. 
20 seconds left. He's got the arm choke in there right now. Head and arm choke here. Can Lombardo pull this off? He does, but Hunt's doing a good job of kind of putting that. that 10 seconds oh, to go. That's that, that is tight. tight. That looks real tight. But he gives a thumbs up to the referee that he is okay. Well, Lombardo should be moving over to the side, though. Oh, Hunt's up there by Lorenzo Hunt, who survives yeah, the mean. barrage there, the submission attempt. And you can tell he's taking this seriously. He's taking his grappling a lot more serious because he's been in positions like that. And he was completely comfortable. You know, he gave the referee a thumbs up with about 15 seconds to go. And he just relaxed. He wasn't taking that much damage. And he knew he wasn't in trouble. He just relaxed there and waited the round out. Here we have here. Let's take a look and listen here. Brought to you by Fruta Loca Juice Bar and Cafe. Be able to see. Let's go. A friend, Emma. Now, what advice would you give hey, to both yeah, of these fighters? Expect them to come hard right I would okay. give them the exact okay. advice as I did at the beginning of the fight. Here, Mike, all right. For Lorenzo, keep the fight standing. You got to use your footwork and movement to be able to avoid those takedown attempts. And for Lombardo, get the takedown. Do what you did at the beginning of the fight. March forward, change levels, get him down to the ground. Very dangerous throwing that kick there, and not even five seconds into the second round, he gets taken down again. Yeah, I mean, it was a good, it was a good attempt because you, you knew your opponent wanted to change levels and get you down to the ground. I think more he could have did a little bit better at lunging into that and turning that into a knee, but unfortunately it was a kick and you know he did make contact and his opponent took him down. Lombardo immediately trying to get over there and get that head and arm choke once again. He's working on it. He's trying to get through there. He's trying to, I think he, he can easily get full mount, which is attempting right now. He continues to work there, trying to get, he's got an overhook, or he's got a head control there. He's trying to push the knee down. He's got to scoot his hip over the top there, while Lorenzo has to turn into him, either get full guard or get back up to his feet, which is what he should be doing. As Kamar Usman has reiterated, get this fight back up standing. If you're Lorenzo Hunt, this corner has to instill in him. You have, don't be on the ground with him right now. Your strength is in the stand-up. You need to be fighting. And now a guard pass there to side control there by Mike Lombardo. He doesn't even want full side control. He's just staying there. Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a great position because you're still now in complete control. When you go side control... You know, it, it takes a, a little bit off because you, you, you know, you're trying to control your opponent while he's able to still continue to move his whole body. But when he was inside control there for a second, he still was underneath his opponent's hip. So you can feel him when he's going and kind of have a little bit more control of him. When you're a newly minted brown belt, let me ask you this question. As a wrestler with also a brown belt, when you're Mike Lombardo, do you want to be in the guard right now or do you want to get out? Because you got him against the cage. Yeah, but you know what you want to do here is, I mean, this is a fight. This is not jiu-jitsu. So what you want to do here is you want to posture up and land something big. Because you've got your opponent pressed up against the cage. And, and it, right now, it feels like it's two guys holding him down inside that cage. So you want to posture up, look to land something big, because he can't move fast enough that you can right now. Very attempted to posture up there, but he put his head back down. Lorenzo Hunt cannot be sitting here. He's just being stagnant. He basically has his legs closed. He needs to be looking for a sweep. He needs to be looking for separation. I think he can perhaps use the cage to stand back up. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got to open up that guard. I mean, you can't keep the guard locked in there with your back up against the cage. because You're not doing it. So you've got to open up and look to at least knee slide up to the side of the cage and try to work your way up. It looks like I think we have a wardrobe malfunction here. But that's not stopping the bar, though. He's still landing the, the right said, elbow. I believe you said it's not a wardrobe show, it's a fight. <laughs> it is definitely a fight. That's a good explosion there by Lorenzo. Trying to get some space there, trying to get separation. Understanding I can't be here.
He needs to start digging. There he goes. He tried. He's got that under, but now he finds himself in full mount. And right now, you've got to push on one of those hips. You got to, you got to push that hip up down. His back. Oh, on beautiful job of rolling out, but good hip scoot. He's got to come all the way up. You can't have. You can't. You can't do this halfway because right now you're still down. If you're going to come up, you've got to come all the way up and make your opponent fight even harder to keep you down than you trying to get up. Just over a minute here in the second round between these two middleweights, Lorenzo Hunt in the black shorts, Michael Lombardo in the red shorts here, now beginning to drop elbows on his opponent. Yeah, he's got kind of got that crucifix trapped up against the cage. And he's landing strikes here. Michael Lombardo looking to take his record, continue his record undefeated, trying to go to 3-0, while Lorenzo Hunt is trying to even out his record at 3-3, three three, but not looking like he's going to be able to do so in this round here. He is definitely going to be down two rounds to nothing. Depending on what the judges will score, it could be 10-9, it could be 10-8, but definitely right now, Michael Lombardo has been dominating this fight. Yeah, you can kind of just see the frustration in Lorenzo Hunt's face. He, he wants to box, he wants to stand up and throw hands, but unfortunately, Lombardo's not giving him any chance to be able to do that. And you got to think that's just extremely frustrating for a guy like him. Definitely frustrating. He's, he can survive these 10 seconds. I'm sure his corner will tell them, do not throw that kick like you did at the beginning of the round, because this is where you were for 4 minutes and 55 seconds. Definitely. All right, let's take a look here at the replay here from the second round here. And, and you know, Lorenzo comes out with the, I, I think it was kind of an attempt at a knee, but it turns into a kick because he wanted to stop the progression of Michael Lombardo because he knew, of course, what his opponent wanted to do was change levels and get him down to the ground. But unfortunately, he was unable to connect with that. Lombardo changed levels, got the body lock, and got him down to the ground. Let's take a look at our fighter adjustments brought to you by Tim Tam. For Lorenzo Hunt, you know, he's got to just get up to his feet. He's got to keep the fight standing and give himself a chance in this fight. And for Lombardo, right now, you win in the fight clearly. You know, nothing needs to change. Get the fight down to the ground. Now look to land big strikes and try to finish your opponent. Because, of course, you don't want to leave it to the judges. So you want to be able to finish your opponent. Well, I was looking into Lombardo's corner, and I can't necessarily read lips, but I understand body language, and they were basically describing combinations, punching combinations to him. Last round. That yeah. surprises me. Yeah, definitely. I, but I think there's no surprise here. He's going to get this fight back down to the ground and, and try to finish this thing. Exactly what he does is change his level. 14 seconds into the third round, changes levels. He gets the takedown once again. Puts Lorenzo Hunt up against the cage pretty much here. And deja vu. Exactly. But I've got to credit Lombardo there. You know, that was a beautiful double leg takedown. That was like a freight train coming. You know, because right when that thing hit, it cut Lorenzo Hunt in two. Now Lorenzo needs to figure out how to get that underhook here. He cannot stay here because he's being dominated this whole fight by Lombardo. He has to get this fight back to the ground. He needs to figure out, I mean, there's the oldest of old school that I learned a long time ago in jiu-jitsu. Sometimes you can abandon technique. There's a red button that you press inside your head. It's the panic button. Just get out. Just do whatever you can to get out. I mean, technically, there are many, many ways he can, he can prevent himself from being in side control. Getting up, standing up to his feet. I'm, to my right is a wrestler. I'm sure you've got many different techniques you could use. And of course, being against the cage, that's an option for you as well. That's true, but for Lombardo, what he's doing, he's, he's essentially trying to set up a finish here. And so when you start to panic, like Lorenzo, and you throw technique outside, you know. You're out of susceptible the, you know, to getting compensated. So you yes. Basically, you know, you can't see what's coming. And so you're just in a haste to try to get up on your feet while your opponent sets up up, and all of a sudden you throw your arm over and you find yourself in the arm triangle and your opponent's choking. Don't get me wrong, I understand jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. I definitely understand that, but at some point, you're going to lose this fight. Exactly. need to do something to get back up. Oh no, I definitely agree. You know, and, and, and you know, I give it, I give it, exactly, I give it one more minute, you, you know, you might hear his, his corner tell him, get up. 
Oh, so he gave it. He, he gave up his back. Was able to get back up, but then he didn't get the underhooks in to prevent being taken down like that. No underhooks in, and, and, and which allows your opponent to be able to drop right back down to your legs, lock his hands, elevate you up, and drop you right back down. In a situation like this, despite you know Hunt attempting to get the fight back under the feet, it is dejection, but there's also fatigue setting in right now. Oh well, yeah, but one thing you know about it is. You know, Lombardo's not really landing anything significant to wear out Hunt. You know, he's kind of just grappling him and, and just holding him down. And, which is, as you can see, Lorenzo Hunt's still able to move. And, you know, he still has a lot of energy there trying to move and get back up to his feet. Good step over there. Now he's in somewhat of a side control position here. Clear the legs here. I think he's trying to work once again for the head and arm choke. He is, but I think he'll settle for that crucifix if Lombardo if Hunt throws his arm right back up there. He went right back into the right back in half guard. <laughs> it's a wrestler's dream right there. That, that's our position. Continuing to work is Michael Lombardo. 145 left in this third round here. Almost like he is coasting to victory. If there's ever a coasting in a mixed martial arts bout here, he is doing, he's putting on an absolutely dominant performance right now versus Lorenzo Hunt. Not creating a lot of damage, like you said, Camaro, but obviously winning this fight. Oh yeah, clearly. Clearly winning the fight. Taking control of the fight from start to finish each and every round. And, you know, this, this was kind of a, you know, a, a wrestler versus non-wrestler. <laughs> Just over a minute to go here in the third round. Titan FC 44 brought to you by It's a 10 Hair Care. Now he's got full mount. Lombardo throwing some bombs here. Hunt giving up his back there. Good opportunity here to stand back up there, but I'm sure he is super fatigued with less than a minute to go, but does throw that back elbow. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was a sacrifice there. You, you kind of gave yourself a chance to stand back up to your feet, but you throw the elbow and put yourself right back down. You know, that, that was kind of a risk versus reward situation there, and in that case, you know, the, the risk was much greater than the reward. Less than 30 seconds to go, Camaro. I mean, we need a miracle here for Lorenzo Hunt to pull this off here. Lombardo's coasting, he's just landing. He's got control, he's got the hips down. He's trying to reach over the leg, trying to flip him over here, trying to take the back. He's just doing what he needs to do to emerge victorious. Yeah, he's done a great job. You know, he drops back down to the feet. You can see him over there. And there we go. Great job by Lombardo, solid performance there. Obviously, dejecting performance right now for Lorenzo Hunt. Bad blood before the fight, friends after the fight. Yeah, man, I mean, that, that's, that's, it. that's the name of the game, you know. You, you've got to flip that switch in your mind before this fight takes place. But once two, two men step inside that cage and they go to battle, you know, it's nothing but respect in most cases after the fight. Let's take a look at some more replays here brought to you by Alienware. And you can see, and this is the story of the fight, Lombardo getting in on those legs each and every time, getting the fight down to the ground and in complete control. Just takedown after takedown, dominant control there by Michael Lombardo, who I'm sure will take his record to continue undefeated at 3-0. Stranger things have happened in the world of mixed martial arts. <laughs> My fingers are crossed, ladies and gentlemen, tuned in on UFC Fight Pass around the world that, that the judges got this one right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can't see how the judges can screw that one up, but... You know, just a credit to both guys. They came in here and they, and they put it on the line and both guys tried to execute their game plan and, you know, the, the guy who executed his plan the best is going to probably be the victory. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, our next event, Titan FC 45 goes down in August, once again, on UFC Fight Pass. We are awaiting the official decision here with Rudolfo Roman. Gathering the scorecards. He has now entered the cage here. He has them. Hopefully he doesn't have to do any too much math. All right. The referee now has them both in camera position here. Let's go to the official decision right now with Rodolfo Roman. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard.
Our judges scored it 30 27, 30 26, 30 27. For your winner, by way of unanimous decision, Mike Lombardo! There you have it, Mike Lombardo. The judges got it right. We didn't think they we, we thought they would, but just in case, you never know. It is MMA. Uh, a winner by unanimous decision. A dominant performance tonight versus Lorenzo Hunt. He now improves his record to 3 0. We look forward to seeing him back once again here in the Titan FC cage, maybe in August. Uh, but of course, our next boat.